We're always looking for stories that are character driven. We're always drawn to some sort of journey that a person or a group of people, or in this case, something uh, was going on. For Goodnight Oppie, the first archival that we ever watched was Oppie's funeral. It's when the final wake up song was played. And I remember watching that footage and being so shocked with the amount of emotion that was in that room. And I knew we had something special in just watching that footage. And so it was from there, that was going to be the ending of our film. How do we build backwards? What led up to this moment that all these people in a room are crying over saying goodbye to a robot? Goodnight Oppie is the story of a rover that was sent to Mars and was expected to live for 90 days, but live for 15 years. And it's a story of a bunch of people who came together from all over the world to do something really remarkable. At this time, we'd like to invite you to sit back and enjoy the landing. I think the draw to the movie at the beginning was the adventure story. We couldn't have written it more perfectly into a script. And when you're thinking about any movie and you're thinking about a protagonist's journey, you want challenges to that rover and all of the variables were unpredictable. But then what was interesting to us is really getting to know the people. If this landing didn't succeed, this might be the end of NASA. In the back of your mind, you're like, this could be a complete disaster. I think the beauty of documentary filmmaking is allowing an audience to be in the room to experience what someone's experiencing as it's unfolding. We're on Mars, everybody. Looks like nothing I've ever seen before in my life. I got no words for this. We wanted to make this film where the audience feels like they are there in 1998 and take the audience through present tense, through this story. Step number one is research. And so Jess did dozens of pre-interviews with people that played various roles in this mission. What was interesting about Goodnight Oppie is that we were coming into these people's lives a year after Opportunity had died. People at NASA do not get a grieving period for a robot. They are moved very quickly on to the next mission. And so we were knocking on these people's doors a year later, and they, for the first time in a year, were talking about their baby on Mars. It was hard to say goodbye. I devoted 16 years of my life to these rovers. What we thought was gonna be the biggest challenge ended up being the complete opposite. I had this preconceived notion that scientists and engineers, particularly at the level that these people are working, would all be very academic and rational and black and white and present the story that way, but none of them did. All of them brought so much emotion to their experience and so much love for their work and therefore also for this robot and each other. Ladies and gentlemen, you are privileged to be in one of the most exciting rooms on Earth at the moment. We knew that it would come through on camera. The biggest challenge in the end was in a 100-minute documentary, you can only have a certain amount of voices in it. And this is a team of thousands of people. We picked 11 people in the end, and we used their anecdotes, their emotional connections to this robot. We were very careful about choosing human beings that were from a wide breadth of life. Aerospace engineering wasn't something that girls around me did. I didn't really know what that job was. You know, I knew they were the engineer, but I didn't know what that was. I just knew that I wanted to be the person that always fixed things. We wanted kids to be able to watch this film who maybe don't think that becoming a NASA scientist or engineer is a viable path for them to see their faces represented in the film. And then the question was, how do we tell the Mars portion of the story in a way that's never been done before? Each rover had nine cameras on her, so there's hundreds of thousands of photographs from each of their journeys, so we know exactly what Mars looks like. So that was the beginning of our conversations with ILM, and they created Mars from the ground up. This is a documentary way of doing visual effects. The very first thing they started doing was creating the rover itself using the 3D models that NASA gave them. And that rover, you know, is real down to the solar panel. And I think they take a lot of pride in the finished product because of how photo real it is, because of the visual effects. We didn't have the luxury like we normally do in a documentary where you are finding the story in the edit room. 
ILM told us, we can create these effects for you, but it's gonna take over a year. So what do you want? We can create anything, but tell us what are those scenes that you want us to start the ball rolling on. And so this is the first film that we've ever written a screenplay for. We used the dozens of pre-interviews that Jess did with scientists and engineers and found the moments that were percolating up over and over. People would tell the same story of opportunity getting stuck in quicksand or spirit not calling home on Soul 18. And so we started to figure out what those scenes that were most important to people were, and we wrote it into a screenplay. And then it was in the archival footage that we were really able to do the more traditional documentary route where we find the story in the edit room. NASA gave us great access, which was amazing. It's almost a thousand hours. We had to digitize a lot of material because it was just tapes sitting on shelves and it was a big project, but it was it was also a fun project. It's like a, you know, an Easter egg hunt. You're finding those little moments in all of that material. They don't come with labels saying there's an amazing moment on this tape. It had to be watched down second by second and someone had to find a needle in a haystack for every scene that's in this film. Oh. One of the best discoveries was called the Analyst Notebook. It's what Angela Bassett ends up reading in our film. Opportunity, Sol 8. We've gotten down the first images of the soil right in front of the rover. It's the strangest looking thing we've ever seen on Mars. It's scientists and engineers writing down every day what they were experiencing on the mission. As storytellers that are trying to keep your audience on a day-to-day -day journey, that's an incredible narrative device to have. And lift off. Blake Neely is our longtime collaborator. He's often writing music before we've ever shot a frame of film. With this film specifically, we thought Blake was going to have to shoulder a lot of the sci-fi part of the film. But then once we hired Mark Mangini, our sound designer, who literally won the Oscar for Dune while we were making this film, then Mark was able to go out to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and record the test beds of these rovers. So he was able to get all real sound of what these rovers operating on the Martian terrain sound like. Once we had Mark designing all of that authentic sound, it freed Blake up to lean more cinematic. I think we have the best job in the entire world because we get to live vicariously through these other people's journeys. All the drama, all of the suspense, all of the discovery in our film comes because the human beings are doing that themselves through the eyes of this rover. I think it's rare as documentary filmmakers to get presented a hopeful story where people from all over the world come together for a common endeavor that is so selfless. Like a well-oiled machine, isn't it? I think that there's also a great impact for kids because the next generation comes in and then another generation comes in. And so I think that the mission's legacy will be an inspiration and a building block for the future. This is a story about the best parts of humanity coming together to do something amazing. To not only pull off the mission, but outlast the odds in the way that they did is pretty remarkable. I'm proud of this team and I'm proud of this film because we were able to create something beyond what we had expected initially, just like the scientists and engineers did. <laughs>